Hey, good morning, folks. Welcome back to Mark Kelly Farm. It's a beautiful Saturday morning here on the farm. We have Kelly with us, and we got a surprise here on the farm. We're going to be doing a new raised bed, and we're going to put it together and uh, show you all about it. So stick around. Now raised beds are not always an easy thing to do because construction wise you got to think about the materials that you're using because if you're just using wood I've always had the experience that in four or five years you're replacing your bed because it's rotten. I've used railroad ties before but then you got to worry about the creosote seeping into your soil if you're growing edible crops not so much for flower beds but uh, it's always a challenge finding good materials to make raised beds out of. I've used more industrial type material before like culvert pipe, uh, guardrail, uh, roofing tin, stuff like that. Roofing tin, you know, looks nice, but you also need the wood frame for that too. So you end up with the same rotting issues. So we had a company recently reach out to us called Snugniture. And they wanted us to try their product and... Uh, do a little product review on it, and that's what we're going to do today. So we've got the product. We're going to turn it into our new herb bed, and we're going to take our old herb bed, bring it over here by the greenhouse, and replace that one with a whiskey barrel eventually. But let's get on this project. So Kelly's going to unbox this thing, and she's going to put it together too to show you the the ease of construction here. So there's the box inside the box. It's in real good shape. There's the company name right there. And then there is the raised bed that we've got. It's all galvanized material, so you don't have to worry about it rotting. Because uh, metal will even rust and rot after a while. So we'll leave, leave you a link to their company down in the description uh, of this video. We'll also uh, give you a discount code where you can... Uh, buy stuff at a discount that's one of the criteria we have here for doing product reviews is it's got to be something that we will use and there's got to be a benefit to our subscribers so we've got both of those got our box open here this is the inside of the panels are all gray and then here's our corners you can see they got kind of a wood grain to it and that's kind of a nice feature so it doesn't look so industrial in your garden and they send everything you need to put together. They even send you a screwdriver. There's a bunch of screws, but it comes with wing nuts. And they even send you gloves to use. Pretty wild. So Kelly's going to start reading the instructions and see how to put this thing together. The panels come in six pieces. There's two pieces you got to put together for the long side. And then your other two pieces are work for the ends. Kelly's putting the long sides together right now. All right, Kelly's got both of the side pieces put together. Now, the next step is to put in the middle braces, which keeps the middle from bowing out when you put material inside. That's always the problem if you're using like roofing tin. How do you hold it? So you always got to end up putting a post there or something like that to hold the middle together. Unless you come up with something like this. Kelly's adding the corner pieces now. On the end pieces. Then they'll go down and tie to the side pieces and tie everything together. Alright, time to put the end pieces on. Kelly installed the little corner caps. And now she's installing the end pieces to the side pieces. With the same screws. Everything takes the same screws. All right, Kelly got both ends on, and we leveled the whole thing this way and then squared it. Now they send little pegs to put in the corners to hold it from moving around until you get soil in it. Once you get soil in this thing, it's not going anywhere. Now just like any other sheet metal construction, the rigidity is in the construction itself. When you first pull these panels out of the box, they're going to seem like they're flimsy, but just like roofing material, it bends easy this way, 
but it doesn't bend easy this way because of the ribs that are put in there. So once you get the corner pieces on and everything and the center braces in, it takes the movement out of it. Now the only slight criticism I have with this thing so far is if they would take two of these bars and lengthen them a little bit to where you could go diagonally with two of them, that would give the center a lot more rigidity because if you bolt them all on a line like that and no cross braces, the middle can still rack a little bit like this. But again, once the dirt gets in there, it's going to sturdy everything up. But that would be the only thing I would do different is to go crossways on those. Now a good way to tell if you're, you're level from side to side is step back and look and see if all the lines are straightened out. Now Kelly's taking advantage of all this cardboard the packaging that comes with it. She's going to lay a good uh, starter mulch down on the bottom on top of these weeds with the cardboard. It seems like two feet the weeds wouldn't grow up through that but there are weeds that would uh, eventually poke all the way up through this uh, material that we're going to put in here. Kelly's got all her cardboard down in here real nice. So now garden soil is very expensive. It can get up to like $30 a bag for three cubic feet. So this is a huge four by eight by two foot tall bed. So it would cost a fortune to fill this with garden soil. So we're going to take this opportunity to practice what's called hugaculture where you get some old wood and logs and stuff and lay down in the bottom to take up a lot of the bulk of where you would need garden soil. So we've got a shelter belt out here full of old downed wood that we can utilize. You want to do it in layers though. You don't want to stack all your wood in here and then try to put dirt in because the dirt can't get down through all the cracks and crevices. Do one layer of your wood, bring some soil in, flatten it out, do another layer and so on and so on. Because as that wood rots, that soil will sink down and you'll get a big slump in here as it rots. So do it layer by layer. Now as the wood rots in there, it's going to provide nutrients for all of your plants that are growing in this bed. And that's the idea behind Hugo culture. So let's go get some logs. All right, we got our first layer of wood in here. Now we're going to dump some just regular dirt in here from the homestead here. Smooth all this out and we'll put another layer of logs in. Okay, we got our dirt over that first layer. Now we got our second layer of wood in here. So now I have what's left of our compost. We're going to throw in on top of this and then regular bagged garden soil on top of that. So we got our beautiful compost in here. I don't even know if we need to put any planting mix or potting soil in here because this stuff is as good or better as anything that you would get in a bag. So Kelly's going to soak this thing down, get it wet, help it settle down a little bit. And this thing, not going nowhere now, it's full of dirt. Sturdied everything right up when it's full like that. And this is a gigantic bed. We're going to be able to plant lots and lots of herbs in here. So let's do the math on our hugaculture experiment here. So this bed is 4 by 8 feet. So 32 square feet. So if we want to go to cubic feet, we're 2 foot high. So you'd have to times that by 2, which is 64. And then you figure a 3 cubic foot bag of potting soil. We'd have just over uh, 20 of those in here. Like 21, 22, somewhere in there, at about 30 bucks a bag. So 20 times 30 is about $600. That's a pretty crazy amount of uh, money to fill this thing up. So Hugo culture makes really good sense, and you can almost call it frugal culture, right, babe? <laughs> frugal culture. Because we're being really frugal by doing this, but it's going to work great. Uh, as that stuff decomposes in there, it's going to generate heat, which those plants will just love. We've already got some plants to put in here. We've got some herbs that we bought and herbs that we started. Now, this isn't the only uh, size that they make uh, or shape. They make big oval ones. They make round ones. 
They make them one foot tall. They make them two foot tall, depending on what your needs are. If you're handicapped or elderly, you might want to use the taller one. I know the taller ones make it real easy on me for weeding. Don't have to bend over so far. When you're six foot four, it's a long ways to the ground. That's why I love my Kelly. She handles all the low stuff for me. But we'll, again, we'll put the link for these, uh, these raised beds down in the description with a uh, code that you can use to get some discounts. How would you rate the uh, assembly experience, babe? Was it really easy? It was pretty easy. Something you can do by yourself? Oh, absolutely. I just need to retrain my left hand to work with my body. Yeah. She couldn't get her left hand to uh, start those nuts on there. So we'll get some, uh, I think Kelly wants to go ahead and put some garden soil or some potting soil on top of this. And then we'll throw some plants in it. You made a beautiful bed there, babe. Thank you. Looks good. Probably a good idea that we put the garden soil in there or the planting mix because it's got the vermiculite in it. It'll help it hold moisture longer. That's one of the issues with a raised bed because of the gravity. The moisture wants to run out sooner than you would like if it was just in the ground. So raised beds got to be watered more often than a ground level garden. Kelly did some planting out here already. What do you got planted, babe? Uh, stevia in this corner, purple sage right here um, in the back, regular sage in the front here. This is an Italian basil plant. Um, this is oregano. This is a lemon basil plant. And that is bee balm back there. And garlic chives all across the front said you were possibly going to put some seeds in here. What were you going to seed in here? Oh, I did um, zinnias, uh, bee balm, and butterfly milkweed. Cool. And I think we got some cilantro seed we can sprinkle in here also. Yeah, and I have um, garlic and um, what's the root? <laughs> Can't be Ginger. Right. Ginger in the house. Okay, gotcha. Well, what do you think of the new bed? I like it. It's going to serve the purpose, huh? It's going to be much nicer to harvest, too. Yeah, it's up off the ground. So, like I said, I'll leave the uh, link to this uh, at the in the description of the video. Also, leave you a screenshot of the promo code that you can use. So, go check out Snugniture if you're wanting a raised bed like this. We're going to enjoy this one. So that sounds like a thumbs up. So Kelly's going to keep going on this bed and some, some other tubs that she's got. And I got three acres of lawn to mow. So until next time, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you guys. Come back and see us here at Mark Kelly Farm. Thanks for watching.